great seeing everybody. You having a good day so far? It has to be. The sun's shining, got a blue sky. I want to introduce my wife. This is Pastor Shelley, so thank you guys for honoring. This is the mother of the house today, and she's such a beautiful, do you think she's beautiful? I have such a beautiful, beautiful bride, and I'm so thankful that she has said yes with me to this over Destin, Florida, because listen, you guys do not know how many times we shop for a house in Destin. I mean, time after time, we looked and looked and looked, and we found different places that we were going to step into, and I get her a place that's one block right there. We can look out and see the ocean from where we were going to park our RV, and God said, will you come here? So she said yes with me. I d she didn't, at first it was like, uh, I'm not sure, and then she said yes. So thank you, Shelly, for being the mom of this house. Well, you're all welcome. Actually, since we've started the ministry three and a half years ago, when we go to Destin or the Fort Walton Beach area, um, I'm ready to come home. <laughs> so the Lord has even changed my heart in, um, from saying yes. Obviously, I have uh, loved that area, and I do love it. But um, I miss you all. I miss what's happening up here when we're down there visiting. But we all know we need a break once in a while. So <laughs> that's typically our break place. But... Um, it has been amazing just to see what God's doing here in this region. And um, if nothing else, just getting to know all of you and just seeing what God's doing in your life is such a blessing uh, for, for us to see the change, the life change. When God first asked us to come here, my response was, Lord, I don't think Martinsville needs one more church, but if you want to show off and change lives and set people free so they can further your kingdom, then I'm all in. <laughs> because it's not about Jason or I. It's not about one more building in this place. Um, it's really what we allow him and give him permission to do. And um, that is all we want to do. We want to give him all glory and praise for how he's led us so far, um, even the water and how he's used you know, Martinsville was known, is known, Martinsville artesian water. Um, our mascot is a well. <laughs> you know, that sounds so funny, but um, it is a well. And our waters at one day uh, healed many, many people. People from all over the world would come to Martinsville and soak in our mineral waters. There were 12 sanitariums here. So... Then we hear about 25, 30 years ago from a prophet that came to town that God was going to restore the water in Martinsville and healing would continue. And we believe the pool is the water um, that he's using. And we obviously, all of you, many of you have seen and witnessed many life change take place from people getting in the water. Not only physical healings, but our soul. I love the song choice today that Darlene and Talia sang. It couldn't have been more perfect for what I'm going to share. And um, it is well with our soul. I love that. It is well with my soul. Our soul, our mind, will, and emotion makes our soul up. And that's one, one way God is moving in the waters. Many people come out and they just, they say they don't even think the same way that they thought. They're not even making choices that they once made. And that is a soul healing. When that takes place and you're aware of that, it's because your soul, your mind, your will, or your emotions were touched and healed. And in many places in God's word, he says, I am the restorer of your soul. So he is um, faithful to his word. He keeps his promises. So anyway, I didn't even plan on saying any of that, but we are thrilled to be here. Happy Mother's Day. It is a beautiful day. Um, one thing I want to start with, I didn't plan on this either, <laughs> but I kept feeling the Lord say to share it. Uh, when I was a fourth or fifth grader, I think I was fourth grade, my teacher asked in the classroom, raise your hand and tell me what you want to be. Well, everybody had their hands raised, and they're all saying firemen, lawyers, doctor, teacher. You know, they were all given occupations. And I raised my hand, she calls on me, and I just wanted to be a mom. <laughs> my heart from even a little girl wanted to be a mom. 
So I'm blessed to have Jared here with me today, my youngest. Um, so Jared Weiss, if you want to wave. Anyway, I Tyler, my oldest, is 34. And of course, our first, you know, the first kid, it just teaches you everything. <laughs> Um, I do joke and say, if I had Jared first, I probably wouldn't have had another one. He was so, so full of energy, um, so fun, kept me on my toes, <laughs> and taught me how to be patient and love different. You know, every kid that we have needs to be loved different. So um, God did grant my heart's desire and love being a mom. Uh, not that I was always uh, perfect in that, <laughs> Many of us fail at times as moms, but um, that's a little bit what I'm going to talk on here in a minute. But God is so faithful in me. He is so good. I need a computer whiz up here because my screen keeps going off. I don't know if you can set it as a longer period of time. Okay, so I am nothing like Jason, as you all know, and I don't teach or preach like him as well. <laughs> so um, I'm more of a teacher. So... Um, the beginning of this. Oh, Faye, do you want to help me? Thank you. Oh, Faye is an IT, is her profession. <laughs> I was kind of joking, but yeah. Thank you. Anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. No, it's not for you. <laughs> Awesome. One hour. Okay, I won't need that much time, but that's good. Thanks, Faye. All right. Yay for Faye. Oh, yeah. How different I am from Jason. <laughs> so um, I'm always, and many of you have seen me, not that I teach or preach a lot, but I am so much different in my style. So just be blessed. Um, may the Lord give you ears to hear, a heart to receive, and um, that you leave changed. How about that? All right. So in Samuel 1 is where I took my info from. But I'm just going to kind of read this before I make some points. How's that? A woman's life was made absolutely miserable by her husband's other woman. When she went to pray at the tabernacle of the Lord, she was rejected. Eli, the priest, accused her of being drunk. No matter where she turned... Hannah was judged and condemned. Elkanah had two wives. Penina had several children, and Hannah had none. As Elkanah and his family traveled to Shiloh to offer sacrifices, he made sure Hannah received special treatment and offered a favor that she would have an, even offerings of consoling, that she would be consoled just because of her barrenness. Year after year, as the family made their way, it would be an annual trip, so they would make their way to Shiloh. Penina mocked, ridiculed, and teased Hannah because she was without child. While in Shiloh one year, Hannah visited the tabernacle of the Lord, where she wept and prayed fervently. She prayed silently begging the Lord to give her children. She made a vow. She said, Lord, if you give me a son, I will dedicate him back to you as a servant. Eli, the priest, was on the other side of the curtain and heard her. He saw her and assumed she was drunk. She said, oh, sir, I am not drunk, but I carry much anguish and sorrow, for I am without child. Eli listened and answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. I don't know if many of you know, but anytime a priest is um, mentioned in the word, it does represent Jesus, because he is the high priest. So I thought this was so cool, that Eli, as a priest, came into agreement with what Hannah petitioned the Lord for, which was that she would conceive. He was in agreement with her request. Eli blessed her, and Hannah went on her way. Hannah conceived shortly after. She conceived Samuel. Samuel means heard by God, 
And as he reached the age where he was weaned, she dedicated him to the Lord and allowed Eli to raise him and grow in the house of the Lord. She kept her promise. Isn't that powerful? So many of us, um, whether you're a natural mother um, in the natural that you you bore children or you even have a mother's heart for children, many, many women um, aren't able to conceive. We have prayed with many and they they end up um, getting pregnant shortly after that too. So we have seen that in the body of Christ that God does restore and bring bring life. But um, even though Hannah went through the season of great sorrow, God granted her heart's desire and she was fulfilled. She lived a long life. She had five other children. Samuel grew up to be a prophet. He was a judge, and God used him to rally the people. They were in a very oppressive state, and so God rallied them together and kept alive their hope and their faith. Isn't that cool? So just how, how the Lord's hand was on Samuel and how he was able, excuse me, to um, keep the Israelites and the, the people, their focus and their faith in Jesus or in in God. Has there been a time in your life where you felt judged, condemned, misunderstood, that you felt um, guilt and shame taunt you or haunt you, sorrow over your lack or your children's lack? At this time, I would like Sam Long to share a testimony. Better break out the Kleenex. (laughs) You know, God is so good. Um, As where Hannah was obedient and gave her her only son at the time back to the Lord, that had to be heart-wrenching, but also um, a very proud moment as she saw what he become. Um, There's times in our lives as moms that we don't make the right choices. So in this instant, we get to hear how God redeems and restores so enjoy Sam's testimony, and then I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so this is going to be really hard for me to say anything. This was my deepest, darkest secret, and nobody knew until about three years ago. Um, when I was 18, I was a freshman in college, and I was doing what the typical teenager would do. I was drinking and partying and... Um, sleeping with people and I wound up pregnant and I went to some of my closest friends and told them I was pregnant and they told me that I shouldn't go through with the pregnancy Um, and in that moment I decided it would be better off if I didn't have the baby so I went to Planned Parenthood and um, I I went through with the unthinkable Um, and and that after that day, I, I didn't speak for almost a month. I hid myself in, in my apartment um, in that moment. And when I did come out, I became um, a heroin and meth addict. And um, I, was, I, was, I was a needle junkie. And I went from a college student to needle junkie. And, Nobody knew why I went there, and um, but every time I saw a mother with a daughter, for some reason I just knew that I was pregnant with a daughter. Um, I I would get jealous, and it would just send turmoil through my body, um, and just it was just horrible. And my mental health was declining, and um, I I found Jesus. I went to a rehab. Um, and I, I found Jesus there, but I didn't find healing um, because I didn't admit it. I, d- I didn't tell anybody. Um, and then one day I was at a women's retreat, and I was in a prayer room with some of some of my closest friends at the time, and and this came out, and I I had to tell people that I had an abortion, and I willingly walked in there and did it. And in that moment, 
God let me meet my daughter. <laughs> and I got to see her. I got to come face to face with her in heaven. And then when I asked her her name, it's Anastasia. One of my friends looked up her name, and that means resurrection. <laughs> um, just so everybody knows. <laughs> Um, and so from that day, there's just been special moments in my life where Jesus has allowed me to wake up and see my daughter or in my dreams, I see my daughter, I see her face to face. And it's, it's sad that I did that, but I know that she is being taken care of. Um, Jesus allowed me in that moment to actually stay, ask her if I could see her room. And so I was able to see her room in heaven. And just, just being able to see that and know that she's in a great place, unfortunately I made that decision, but, but I was able to forgive myself. And then I had to come home because my husband and I had been going through fertility problems for about three years at that point. So that whole time I'm blaming myself. I did this, I chose this. And so I had to come home to my husband and tell him that I had been lying to him for three years and that I had an abortion and he forgave me. <laughs> and two years later, we, we have a baby <laughs> uh, who's almost one. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> and so just, just the power of God in those moments and, and even though you make an unthinkable choice and what you don't think you could ever forgive yourself for, you can, and, and he does forgive you, and he's taking care of my baby <laughs> up in heaven. So, uh, yeah, thanks for crying with me <laughs> and hearing my story. Thank you, Sam. You know, we as mothers, there are many, many things we've done right <laughs> to nurture our children and to um, protect our families. But sometimes in our lives, we make a wrong choice. But, but God, he is so amazing. And by the Holy Spirit, he always is leading us to a place of repentance. That is what he does. Then as we humble ourselves, we ask forgiveness. Freedom and restoration come and my favorite, justification. That is how our God works. And, um, you know, justification literally means just as if it didn't happen. And so it is a gift. Justification is a mighty gift. I want every mother and every person here to know that Jesus is here to vindicate you, vindicate you, forgive you, heal you, comfort and restore. There's, there could be broken relationships here with uh, children or stepchildren. There could be other issues um, with mothers. Um, just to know that God has a plan for restoration, and um, that's his biggest, funnest thing, I think, is reconciliation to relationships. That's what he loves. Um, he brings righteousness into everything that we've done wrong. Isn't that amazing? He is the righteous judge, and his love is just covered, obviously covers our sins, covers our wrongdoings. It is powerful, isn't it? His love is so, his mercy, his graces um, were so undeserving, but he throws them and covers us on him anyway, doesn't he? He just, he wants us enveloped in his love. So our altar call this morning is for anyone who needs a touch from the Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to wash away anything keeping you from receiving the fullness of freedom, the fullness of hungering Jesus in your life. I love your part, Sam, that you shared. Um, obviously, you were repentive. You, for, you asked for forgiveness. You had to share with your husband. Um, you know, the enemy wants us to keep things a secret so we don't receive freedom. He knows, boy, once Jesus touches each person <laughs> and what we're going to do for the kingdom of God that's he to advance the kingdom so the freer we get uh the more healed we get the more we advance his kingdom in in right way and that's obviously why we are here to have relationship with the Lord and to advance his kingdom so thank you so much for sharing that Sam that was powerful 
Um, I love this scripture in Psalms 34, 5. It says, those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. God is in the family of restoration business. And like I said, reconciliation, I think, is his funnest, his funnest game. <laughs> he loves to work that way. I'd like to ask um, if Randy and Ted could bring this table right over here in front. What we're going to do, I'm going to have Tammy come up and explain this. It's very powerful. We used to do this in Cleansing Stream Ministries, which was a powerful ministry of freedom. And um, it just pertains to water, pouring it over your hands, and you guys wiping your face. And what it's about is all shame. Right here. Yeah, just right here in the center. Thanks. All shame, guilt, just the way God removes it. It's just an, it's an actual act. I'll have Tammy explain it here in just a little bit. So for all the mothers here, be sure you take from the bouquet here at the back by the Life of Love sign, there are flowers. And um, I could maybe use a couple women helping pull those out, maybe Nancy or, I don't know, a couple women who want to. Um, pull out a flower for the ladies before they leave. Um, I wanted to share real quick if Faye wants to put that on the screen. The Lord showed me this the other day when I was preparing. So... You know, there's a meaning to every color. And as I bought the flowers, this just kind of came in my heart. As you guys take a flower, use it as an intercession tool. So as you look at that flower throughout your week, red means the blood of Jesus. So release that over your children or some other, ever, some other area of your life. Red represents the blood of Jesus. Orange is for deliverance and freedom. Purple is for the royalty and priesthood. Pink, right relationship with God. Yellow is purification process. So as you look at your flower, whatever color you pick, um, be praying for your children and your families that over these things. Um, it's just a great, great little tool to, again, you know, prayers are never unheard. <laughs> They're always... Um, God always uses them and um, moves because of our prayers. And what better way for a mom to pray? <laughs> you know, how many times do we hear, I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for my mother or my grandmother. We hear that. I mean, I'm 57 years old. I've heard that my whole life of people in the church that have come back to the Lord. Um, we ministered to a man that you had caught bounty hunting, and he was just in tears when we shared with him the meaning of his name and Jer Jason was worshiping some worship songs and he said, my grandmother, I, she raised me and we went to the Seventh-day Adventist church and wasn't, he was totally different. Here he comes in our house, strung out on meth and heroin and by the time worship starts and we're sharing this stuff with him, he's a ball baby, um, totally sober <laughs> and just engaging with us how God used his grandmother to raise him in the church and just how blessed he was. So it's there's power in our words. There's power in what we decree and declare over our children and grandchildren. Um, there's nothing like it, moms. And, you know, God gave us a heart a little different than men, and there's a reason for that. God is man. God is woman. He, his whole heart is both combined. So, Tammy, if you would love to come up and explain this um, for whoever, like, Anything the enemy would be tormenting you with or guilt, shame, I'll let her take over and she'll explain it a little better. Yes, the scripture that Pastor Shelley uh, mentioned earlier, Psalm 34, 5, that we're to look to him with our faces being radiant and unashamed. Because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we don't have a right to remain guilty. There's another scripture that says he forgives the guilt of our sin. So we have a responsibility to walk free because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. And he wants you to be able to, to hold your head high. You know, he doesn't want his kids going around with their head hung over and carrying guilt, shame, and condemnation because he paid the price for that. 
and he wants you to be free. So what you're going to do is you're going to come forward and we're going to pour water over your hands and pray, you know, that the Lord's just going to wash away any type of guilt, shame, condemnation from your life. Because there's another scripture that says he's the lifter of our heads. You know, he wants you to walk around with your head held high because of the price that he's paid for you. And so as you come forward, keep that in mind that the Lord wants you to be completely free of this. I encourage you to forgive yourself, even if you don't feel like it, because our emotions, our feelings can mislead us. And so you're a powerful person because of what Jesus did on the cross, and you choose to forgive. And you can just say that, I choose to forgive myself and know that the Lord is going to bring healing. As you come and do this, it truly is a powerful a powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit of God, just washing you clean, giving you a fresh start so you can hold your head high. So with that being said, um, you guys can just line up around and come forward, and Shelly and I will pour. Or what about um, Randy? Okay. Could Randy and Ted pour the water and then... Um, Sam, do you want to help us pray up here? We could have Sam, Tammy, and I, and Darlene. We could have four people praying. That would be good. All right. And um, for those who need to leave, and we understand there's lunches, dinners, <laughs> family time, um, you know, if just if you want to hang out here, that's great. Um, if you need to leave, that's, that's okay as well. But um, we would love to have you experience this. Um, it, it's not a long process, and, and I didn't um, plan on having such a short little word today, but it's Mother's Day, so we know everyone is busy as well, so I think it kind of works out with God's timing. All right, so the music can go up a little bit, and um, those who hang out just kind of be in prayer and intercede for us. Thank you. <laughs> 